What's up, Zelda fans? This is Hyper Paradox, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. In the last episode, we cleared the Tail Cave and earned, and got ourselves the first instrument of the Sirens. We also rescued Bow Wow and progressed through the second dungeon, Bottle Grotto. In this episode, we're going to see if we can try and finish up Bottle Grotto. Right then, so, uh, here we are in a dark and spooky room, and if you look closely, there's an imprint on that wall. And behind it is the mini-boss of Bottle Grotto. This is the Hinox. Every time you hit him, he'll try and throw a bomb at you. And if he beats his chest like that, he'll rush up and try to throw you, which is a full heart of damage. But, like any other boss in this game, he's not that difficult. In fact, that's one complaint I have about the about Link's Awakening. The bosses are really, really, really easy. Okay. We actually want to pay close attention to this owl statue. First, defeat the imprisoned Pole's voice. Last, Stalfos. That might not make any sense for the moment, but trust me, you'll want to keep it fresh in your mind. And here we have a new enemy, the Vacuum Mouth. Vacuum Mouths, as their name suggests, they try and suck you in. And we get the map in this chest. That'll help. And if we check out the map, it looks like a jar or a bottle. Okay. want to get these 20 rupees here, and I want to get this magic powder because we're going to need it in the next room. Although a guardian acorn certainly doesn't hurt matters. Okay, so we want to uh, equip our magic powder and go through here to meet the Boo Buddies. This is the only time in the game they appear. You light both torches, they run away. And inside that chest, it is the dungeon item! You found the power bracelet! At last, you can pick up pots and stones. This is going to make our lives a little bit easier because now we won't hear that annoying message. So, how you use the power bracelet, you, pu you press and hold the button it's assigned to and pull in the opposite direction. I remember when I first played this game, it took me a little while before I figured out how to use the power bracelet. But we have a key there. And we do have a locked door coming up. Right there. R actually, right here and right now. However, we don't want to go through that locked door yet. Instead, we'll want to take this pathway. And there is a Pole's voice. This is what the Owl and the Stalfos. This is what the Owl statue was telling us about earlier. So first... First, I get hit by an arrow from a Stalfos. Defeat the Pole's voice, and it said defeat the Stalfos last, so take out the keys. And there we go! If you defeat them in that order, the chest containing the Nightmare Key will appear. I remember when I was first playing this game, this gave me a lot of trouble. It took me a while. And it's yet another platforming segment. I know a lot of fans aren't a aren't as big of fans of the platforming segments, but I personally think, I personally li like them, because they're filled with Mario enemies, such as the these Goombas and Piranha Plants. I actually think this is the only place where Piranha Plants appear. You can call me out on it, but I do think I'm right. Well, actually, no, I don't think I'm right. I'm pretty sure they, uh, they appear in another area of the game. Has been a while since I've played this. But the reason why I went back up is because I want to take the teleportal back to the beginning of the dungeon. Because, now that we have the power bracelet, we can get to this chest. And it, we get 50 rupees. And now we have 200. And I was hoping we'd get 200. Because there is an item back in Mabe Village in the shop that costs 200 rupees. Alright, let's, uh, 
So now we can actually unlock that door that we saw earlier. And my sister is arguing with someone downstairs. Oh well, can't help. Can't be helped. Alright, here we go. Now I actually didn't get a chance to talk about Pole's voices. As you can see, your sword won't do diddly squat against them. Instead, what you need to do is throw pots at them. And, wow! Another Guardian Acorn! Now that I think about it, that is going to help. Because we are coming up to the boss soon. We just have to go through this passageway. Now, as you can see, if you stand on this platform, it won't go down. You are not heavy enough. What you need to do is you need to carry this pot up with you, and now it'll go down. Alright, and the boss is right behind that door, or the nightmare, I should say. So let's hop over and meet him. Ho, ho, ho! I'm your bad guy this time! Ho, ho, ho! Santa Claus? No. Since this is the Bottle Grotto, appropriately, it's a genie. Nah, nah, you can't hurt me as long as I have my bottle. Yada, 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 yada. Alright, this battle comes in two phases. Um, and we'll want the Power Bracelet for the first phase. Or, he's gonna throw some fireballs at you. You cannot block them with your shield, so you have to dodge them. Then he'll chase after you, and you'll want to hit him with your sword. I can't move, but I'm still alright. Your little sword won't break this bottle. True, but I know it will. What you want to do is pick up the bottle and throw it at the wall. This will damage him. And just like the Mario series, three is the magic number. So you lather, rinse, and repeat. A lot of people say that the genie does look like a clown. And that disturbs me. Because think about it. A clown mixing with a genie. That could be downright terrifying. Alright, but this is the last, uh, this is the last, uh, time he's gonna throw fireballs at us. Well, actually, it won't be, because there is another phase. So, hit the sword, and we have freed the genie. Wah! You, you broke my bottle! Why, you, you make me hopping mad! So now we're gonna want the rock's feather for this. He's gonna chase after us, and when you hit him with your sword, he's gonna throw a fireball at you. It takes about eight hits for him before he goes down. So, and those fireballs, they actually only do a half a heart of damage. But you can dodge them by jumping, even though it doesn't look like the part. Oh, get away from me, get away! Thank you! You are down. Except when you really think about it, genies shouldn't really be affected by swords because they're made of air. Alright. Irrelevant. As we now have the seventh... Uh, the, the seventh... The second instrument of the sirens. You've got the conch horn! And it does sound like a horn. Prairie. Prairie. The prairie is waiting. Alright! We have completed the second dungeon. Oh, jeez. But there is actually some stuff we can still do. In fact, quite a lot of stuff we can do before we get to the third dungeon. Bow Wow! Thank you very much! And let's get this piece of power while we're at it. In fact, there are two things that we can do in the mysterious forest now that we have the power bracelet. And one of them should be down... 
right over here, yes. Because now that we have the power bracelet, we can move these rocks. And we get another secret seashell. Very nice. Now the other thing we can do is right around this corner. No, it is not this cave, but it is under that rock. Okay. What you want to do in here is you want to sprinkle magic powder on this altar. And... Meet the Mad Batter! Hey kid, you woke me up from a fine nap! Thanks a lot! But now I'll get my revenge! Are you ready? Believe it or not, you actually want to say yes! I'll let you carry more magic powder! <laughs> are you ready? Yes we are! <laughs> you deserve it! Now look at all that junk you have to carry! Ha! Take care! See you again! Now if you look at the bottom of the screen, we can actually carry 40 handfuls of powder rather than 20. There are three locations where he'll appear on the island, and I will be getting them all. This is a 100% playthrough. Okay, so we are down in here, and we need to actually go back to May Village. By the way, these three bushes will always have hearts in them. Kind of reminiscent of how in Link to the Past, there were always hearts in the pots in Link's house. But we're going to go ahead and return to Madame Meow Meow. And of course you will appreciate us for returning Bow Wow. And she repays you by giving you a big wet kiss. Lovely. You don't even get an item. Oh well, I suppose beggars can't be choosers, but Bow Wow is safely at home. But if I could just find two more rupees, then I'll be golden. Come on. Alright, there's one. And there's two! Great! We actually want to head right up here to the shop. And we're going to get two items. First, we're going to get these bombs. And yeah, now that we have bombs, it's going to be good. The other item we want is this shovel. This is why I mentioned that you need 200 rupees earlier in the video. And it is not optional. You do need the shovel. In fact, without the shovel, you can't reach the third dungeon. So, I wonder what would happen if I sprinkled powder on the uh, dog. Oh no! I killed the dog! PETA is going to sue! Oh jeez! I actually did not know that was possible. In fact, I want to see what happens if I sprinkle it on the cuckoo. Fried chicken! Nice. Animal abuse. I actually don't support it. I do have two cats. And I love them very much. Alright. But since I took some time to get on PETA's most wanted list, I am running out of time. So... Next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, we are going to search for this prairie and take this time to get a few more items before we head to the third dungeon. If you like my videos, hit that like button or hit that big red subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. For now, this is Hyper Paradox, signing off.